So we're kind of starting off in the middle of a project here. This is my Industrial Light F300 horizontal milling machine, and it needs a new crossfeed nut because this one is just worn out till there's nothing left of it. Inside here, the threads themselves used to be an Acme thread, trapezoidal, and now they are just sharp little spikes of their former selves. Can't really see, but you can trust me. So instead of making a cast piece, because yeah, I'm making a machined piece and it's going to be rectangular. I'm making it out of 360 free machining brass. I took some preliminary measurements and then I bandsawed a block out of this chunk of brass that I have. I milled it square on all sides and determined the height that it needed to be. Now I wanted to make this rectangular to begin with because I don't want to have to waste all my time removing these spots. Now nothing about the original piece is symmetrical, so I had to come up with weird ways to measure it so that I could figure out the hole spacing in relation to each other rather than you know how far in or whatever. I used some 5 16 inch hardened drill rod in order to figure out the spacing for these mounting holes. And then from there, I used squares and various other things to determine the center hole relationship. After I had a basic shop drawing, I wanted to make sure that my measurements made sense as if the machine were put back together. So I used these parallel blocks, gauge blocks, and feeler gauges to stabilize the lead screw to the table the way that it would sit inside the machine. And then I took measurements from there to make sure that I had the height clearance in order to make a rectangular block rather than the cast block with different screws in it. After I verified all those measurements, then it was time to use the lathe to drill the hole in the center. Now for the lathe, I used this faceplate setup because I don't have a four jaw chuck. Now it looks a little intimidating at first, but I actually welded the ends of those turnbuckles together so that realistically speaking, this thing cannot and will not move. Before I started drilling, I put a zero degree rake angle on the end of the drill bits by using a diamond honing stone. This is so that the brass itself doesn't grab the drill bit and cause it to deviate from center while I'm also peck drilling it. Now the drilling all went really smoothly along the way. The only downside to this faceplate setup was the step blocks actually propelled chips of brass all the way across my shop into every little nook and cranny you could ever imagine. Now, even though I knew that the faceplate setup was 100% secure, I still I maintained my area down at the tailstock region of the lathe the entire time. Once I got to 43 64 I then started the tap, the Acme tap, on the lathe itself. Now, I did this so that I could finish it off by hand, which I also forgot to record. So once the center hole was all tapped, it was time to drill the mounting holes, which I already drilled preliminary holes for, and now I'm finishing off with 5 16ths of an inch. Maybe slow that down a little bit. Holy shit. So that was me leaving the cover up on my belts and then actually dropping the spindle out of the, uh, the headstock into the brass itself because I forgot to put the cover down. Oops. So once everything's all drilled and it's finished, it's ready to slap onto the machine and see how we did. We did a very mild deburring on it first, but I think that's to be expected. So the original one here used these socket headed cap screws. And obviously with me making this much thicker and rectangular, I had to switch over to a different type of screw. So I used pan headed screws so that I'd have the height clearance that I needed. Now the screws dropped right into place and that was the most satisfying thing of any project is when you go to put it together and it just falls into place. So I tightened it down to my made up torque specs in my head that mean nothing and figured it was time to put the table onto the machine. The table itself weighs a Brazilian pounds and I didn't feel like trying to record myself trying to put it on there. But after I oiled everything up and actually got it to go into the slideways and adjusted it all, it works smooth as butter. Before I tested the power feed, I changed a few of the mounting screws in the dovetail ways just to make sure that I had good equal pressure down there. And I put the power feed on the highest setting and let her rip and it travels right across just as smooth as it, well actually better than it ever did. And if you're still here, thanks for watching. Next time I'll try to get the entire project in there. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.